G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for a, yet another Eagles video. It's obviously uh, a topic close to my heart, and uh, but it is a, it's a critical time to be a West Coast Eagles fan right now. This is obviously the back of our second wooden spoon. Um, there's a lot of action to take place. We're going to be obviously a big part of the trade period this year, potentially trade and pick one. But today, we're going to address the recent news that the Eagles have decided to publicly back in Adam Simpson for uh, maybe not the entire two years remaining on his contract, but at least the start of next season. So it is significant news. They were kind of hinting at it uh, in recent weeks, pretty much since the Derby loss, uh, the big Derby loss. That's where the tone changed, particularly in the media. The media has kind of been going for Adam Simpson the whole year, but those who are a little bit more neutral or perhaps even pro West Coast reporting, like Ryan Daniels, for instance, the language around Adam Simpson and the mood seemed to shift around that Derby. And it did seem like there was a significant chance that they were going to sack him. Then the next week we come out and beat the Western Bulldogs and suddenly we don't really know what to feel because not it wasn't just the fact that we won, it was that we played really well and I thought it showed some really good signs for the future. And I think we continued that uh, for two and a half quarters against Adelaide before we just got tired and to be honest, I'm fine with that. But as it's been reported, the West Coast board has unanimously backed Adam Simpson to continue as Eagles coach in 2024 after a meeting on Monday afternoon. Now, on the one hand, um, I did see something from Jared Whiteley kind of praising us uh, West Coast, which is rare. When was the last time West Coast got praised in the media for anything? But he said he couldn't help but admire the fact that West Coast kind of just don't relent to media pressure. And thankfully, I'm, I'm glad for that. I'm grateful for that. I think that's a great attribute of our club. I do like the fact that we treat our coaches in particular with some dignity and grace and when Woosha stepped down, it was his time to go. You know, I wouldn't underrate that from a brand point of view. You know, if we're trying to attract a good coach in the future, we want to have a demonstrated past of treating our coach as well. But the cynic in me, and I actually don't think this is that cynical at all, but I just think that this decision was almost purely financial. And I've been reading a bit into this topic and I found a really good article on it. But we all know that uh, it's been talked about previously. I've mentioned it on this channel. The enormous financial repercussions for West Coast parting ways with Adam Simpson, they're paying out the rest of his contract it was something like $1.6 million would be the payout. And then you've got the 200% tax on top of that. I saw somewhere else that it would, it would be estimated up to like nearly $6 million. Now, before the I saw the announcement that Simpson was uh, going to be backed in, I suppose, I found a really good article by someone called John Townsend from sportfm.com. And I will leave the link in the description uh, if you're interested in that. But he basically suggested before it came out that Simpson was being backed in that you follow the money. And it, the money in this situation is arguably... In fact, not even arguably, clearly the biggest factor. Now, people may look at West Coast and think you are the richest club and you have millions and millions of dollars in your reserve and you can take a punt on uh, spending $6 million on a coach. But don't forget, West Coast Eagles is owned by the West Australian Football Commission. Therefore, you know, spending decisions of this nature, they need to be approved by the West Australian Football Commission and they're unlikely to approve a spending of $6 million that is only gonna come back and bite them in the ass. So for instance, and I'm getting these numbers from the article that I've listed, West Coast paid a $2.7 million royalty to the West Australian Football Commission last year. That was down by 1.1 million on the previous year. But what would that drop to? The article says if we had a six million dollar payout of adam simpson so you know on the surface it might seem a, a great showing of faith and backing him in and displaying a really strong culture i'd like to think that is still true but honestly i think we just have to accept the fact that this is undoubtedly a financial decision in its purity now i suppose we have to discuss what do we actually think of the fact that adam simpson is going to be coached to be honest i think i'm relieved and i, I think that response sort of came out subconsciously i think when i saw the article that he had been backed in for at least the start of next year i think the feeling that came over me was one of relief i suppose for me personally you know I, you know adam Timms is a good coach when good coaches kind of lose the plot a little and they go to shit um it's usually because maybe they're burnt out or potentially you know strategically the game's gone past them a good indicator of this is if you know if you have the same stale list uh over a long period of time and they've stopped performing. I suppose that's true to an extent, but I felt like that was more applicable to the final years under John Worsfold, where that 2013 team should never have finished 13th. What the hell? This has been clearly a lot of mitigating factors where uh, obviously injury has played its part. It wasn't just 22 and 23, by the way. I was actually watching an old video from 2021 where I'm ranting about the Eagles and I talked about how there was seven out of our best 12 missing. So the problem has been there for a while. So the availability of the list, uh, the fact that it's quite clear we have not drafted 
drafted aggressively, you know, between that 2019, 20, pretty much those two drafts in particular, actually. And even before then, a few misses with first round draft picks. The team he's had has not been equipped to do anything substantial this year. But I think at the start of the year, if you told me we're going to have the injuries we have, I would have said, yeah, bottom two for sure. That being said, obviously it doesn't excuse the horrendous losses we had this year. So I will hold space for that. I don't, uh, I haven't changed my mind on that, but I don't really believe it's the case that Simpson has lost the players. I could be wrong, but the response we saw when it became very, very possible that Simpson was going to get sacked was we came out and beat the Western Bulldogs in Melbourne. So it's a mental thing as much as it has been anything else. And to be honest, you know, one thing I've kind of noticed about the AFL, and it's kind of a broader social issue, but we definitely do it in the AFL in particular. But when we talk about sacking a coach or sacking someone, I feel a lot of the time it comes from the perspective of wanting to punish for bad performance. Deciding who a senior coach should be, it shouldn't be as simple as, well, these results were really bad. You deserve to be sacked and therefore you will. The real question is, who is the best coach to lead us forward at the moment? Okay, guys, before we continue with the rest of the video, I do have an important message message to share with you. As you'd know, this year, True Footy has started working with the fantasy platform called Game Day Squad. And on behalf of Game Day Squad, I have something pretty awesome to share with you. And that is, if you haven't already, that they have just launched for AFLW. That means you can start fresh with a new squad and team and again, win weekly prizes. This is your chance to get ahead of the game and make a team for the start of the brand new season. So make sure you follow the link in the description to both creating a team on Game Day Squad and signing up to the True Footy League, which is of course completely free. Let's try transform women's fantasy Aussie rules into a sensational reality. And to me, right as it stands with a team who is not expected to, you know, really climb out of the bottom four for maybe the next couple of years, the pressure of performance isn't really there. I'd rather have the proven educational coach in Adam Simpson than take a punt on what's out there because I do acknowledge that I, and pretty much a lot of you as well, we're not equipped to really assess which assistant coaches would do a better job than Adam Simpson right now. But it's not even just who would do better than Adam Simpson. Like I want us to pick a coach that we can stick with, not pick some decently performed assistant coach in another club and virtually make him a sacrificial lamb and sack him in two years when the rebuild's not going well. Am I super confident that Adam Simpson's going to lead us to our next premiership? Nah, but I'm comfortable with him being at the helm right now. I do like him. I do think the last two years have been a shit show and nothing got worse than this year and we can't accept anything like that anymore. But deep down, I do think oh, he's the guy I want at the helm right now. I'm sure some of you will disagree with that. The reaction in the general AFL media has been interesting though. A lot of people um, have been really unhappy with our decision to extend Adam Simpson. To be honest, it's hard to take some of these criticisms really seriously because of the source where it's coming from. The media in general like to go after senior coaches when they sense a kill. It's very, very rare to get a balanced and measured approach, in particular from Kane Corns. He says, this is the decision they've made. For me, it's the wrong one. I can't believe it and I'm shocked by it. I'm not even saying he's particularly wrong, but it does feel like I just can't trust the source that is Kane Corns. He doesn't have any journalistic integrity. He does make a fair point that no coach in the history of the game has survived numbers like this. But to be honest, yeah, I agree that if Adam Simpson didn't have two years left on his contract at significant dollars, then he would probably be gone, but that is not the case. He makes a couple of other comments that I kind of half agree with and also disagree with. He says he disagrees with the statement that Simpson has steered them through the first phase of the rebuild. To be fair, that is a really fair criticism. As far as the first two years of the rebuild gone, has gone, you can't give Adam Simpson a tick. Sure, the massive injuries and lack of personnel and lack of talented reserves is out of his control. He can't control how many injuries we get. We also can't control what access to draft picks we have. So he's right. Adam Simpson has not steered us through the first two years of the rebuild. But then Ken Corns goes on to say, I would argue that the rebuild hasn't even started yet. Where have you been, bro? Even the club has said they're going to get younger and it'll get more difficult for them. Yeah, well, obviously, when you're early into the rebuild, you're going to get younger. Some teams are still getting younger. Fremantle's getting younger. Maybe not next year, but, you know, going into this year, I'm sure they got younger. But the communication from the club for the last two years has been we're going to replenish through the draft. And then we did replenish through the draft in 2021. And then even more so in 2022, when we got two first round picks, Jinby and Hewitt, we got three rising star nominations this year. I don't know how you can, with a straight face, say that West Coast haven't started rebuild. That's just stupid. Anyway, those are just my thoughts on Adam Simpson. Um, you know, I, I, I think I'm comfortable with it at the moment, but we don't really have a choice because like I said, the, the hands are tied financially, but I'm also very comfortable with him being there. And I would have been uncomfortable with a $6 million payout and the enormous salary cap pressure that we would have absorbed because then it would mean we couldn't spend anywhere else in the football department to improve how things are going. We have seen some off-field changes, of course. We'll run through those. Kofed was the head of fitness and he is now uh, gone willingly, I suppose. Pratt has also willingly moved on. So 
potentially with those guys, they wanted to get out of the dumpster fire that was this season. I don't really blame them. It does seem that Matthew Knights is now the forwards coach and uh, Jared Schofield has gone from overseeing stoppages specifically, I believe, to now looking at the midfield. And I'd imagine Nick is still kind of going to be involved with ruck and stoppages. That was already his uh, role as a player. So we still need a backs coach, but uh, I'm, I'm guaranteeing that Luke Shuey is going to be some sort of potentially a development coach this year. And it would be nice if we got on the hunt for some really good assistant coaches, uh, potentially Isaac Smith, who knows. But anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on Adam Simpson staying. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. There's a lot of Eagles fans who watch True Footy naturally because I made a lot of Eagles content this year and I appreciate your support. So let me know in the comments what you think. I think at the end of the day, I, I accept it. A, we have to accept it. But B, I do like Simo and I do have faith that things will get better. But maybe I'm just a blind optimist. But anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.